In this lesson, we're gonna look at the functionality and usage of Azure Cost Management. When it comes to costs, we often have two desires. I need to know what am I spending my money on? And I wanna control what I'm spending my money on. And Azure Cost Management does both of these. Firstly, we can look at, well, what are we spending? So if we jump over to the portal, and there are APIs to get this information as well, but I'm gonna go down here to the bottom to cost management and billing. And then from here, I'm gonna select that. And then from here, go to cost management. And then I'm gonna look at cost analysis. And what it's gonna do right now, I'm focused on a single subscription. And straight away, we can see it showing me, well, how have I spent money so far? I can see the rate I'm spending it. And using machine learning, it's saying, well, based on how you're spending it, this is what you're trending. This is how you're gonna end up spending the money for the rest of the month. So that's showing me what I have. Notice it's also showing me some automatic breakdowns by the type of service. So what am I spending on by service type? What am I spending it on by location? And what resource groups are they actually in? So I get some nice information straight away. But one of the things I can actually do here is right now, I'm just saying, okay, this is showing me everything. But I could change this. I could say here, my group by, I have a whole bunch of choices to change what I'm being grouped by. And I could go down, remember we talked about tags all the time. I could say group it by tag, and then it will show me all of the tags I've got in my various subscriptions. So I might say, well, group them by cost center. So now I can quickly see, well, okay, well, based on the cost center, I can see, well, untagged is costing a certain amount, core IT is costing a certain amount. So now it's even easier to see exactly what is happening here. It's also right now showing me accumulated costs, but there are other things I could view. I could view my daily costs rather than accumulated. So what am I spending each day? I have the same idea up here at the top, but I could say, okay, daily costs, and that's gonna start breaking it down by the types of resource that I'm doing. So now it's got this nice view of everything I'm spending by the type of resource. I could see cost by service, so what are the actual services I have costing me? And I could also say, hey, give me the details, so the exact line by line item prices of what I'm doing, and I can pick different details. So basically I can customize this however I want, I can get huge amounts of information. But maybe I wanna control it. So this is where budgets come in. So now I'm over here on this left-hand menu, and I can select budgets. So budgets let me define a number and then actions I want to perform when I get to that number. Now, what I can actually control is, well, how is that number interpreted? For example, I pick a scope. I'm doing the entire subscription. It's showing me historically what you tend to spend. I might use that to say, well, what's a reasonable budget I want to configure? I could add various filters around this. So I could filter on certain types of resource, including tag and reservation name and resource type. So I can be very granular on how these budgets are gonna be created. But I give it a name. I set reset periods and expiration dates, and then I give it a number. So I'll say 200. Now, what I can do is I have two choices on how that 200 number is actually going to be used. I can say I want this alert condition to fire at let's say 50% of the actual use. So when I hit $100, I want you to do this thing. It can email different groups of people, but it can also trigger an action group. Those same groups we used in Azure Monitor so this could call a web hook, it could call a function, an automation, all of those things. Or I can set it based on forecasted. So based on the trend of where I'm going, if it looks like 
hey, I'm going to actually hit 100%, i.e. 200, I want to do this. Or maybe I care more, well, if it looks like I'm going to hit 150%, then I want you to do this thing. So I can actually now trigger things to happen before I hit the numbers. Maybe I can take corrective actions. So forecasted is looking at, well, what are we doing? What do we think the trend is going to be? And let me actually react before I go and break that number that I really, really don't want to break. So those things together, the ability to see into the costs and then actually be able to add those various budgets can be really, really powerful.